Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning routine. It is Thursday morning, June the 22nd, 2017, and I am so glad to see all of you today once again. Yesterday's morning show was fantastic with my friend Bernie. They hit the road yesterday afternoon, and they are hightailing it south towards the great state of Mich... Wait, what state is that in? What state is that in? That is Georgia. How about that? You know, I'm so used to saying the city of Atlanta that I just forgot what state Atlanta is in. How? <laughs> That's so funny, man. So today is going to be a great morning routine. And uh, we are going to be talking about pea milk shortly. Okay? But I, I'm going to try it for the first time just to see what's going on. And really, it's pea milk. But... We're going to get to there, okay? So, uh, but anyways, I hope everybody's Thursday is off and running to a good morning. It's nice and early here right now. And if you're watching this later in the day or listening on the podcast later in the day, I hope everything is going the way that you want it. And if it's not, now's the time to turn it around because there's still time left until the clock strikes midnight. So, very good. So, I was recent reading the recent Time magazine the Swamp Hotel, they were a big story about Trump's hotel, and uh, a whole lot of pages of la 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 la, and I found only three things that I found interesting enough to share. One being, here we go, this one I thought was fascinating. Right here, a little chart in the bottom here, listen to this guys, this is amazing, listen to this. Acres of land created in California by a May 20th landslide on the coast near Big Sur. 13 acres. 13 acres of new prime oceanfront property in California were created by a landslide, and they're going to start selling those acres. How safe do you think those acres are? I have a question about that. I don't know, but you know, it's going to get gobbled up faster than anything because new land in California, there's like no, like that never happens. Right? So very interesting. And then over here, two little nuggets back here on this little, uh, charty chart chart here. One, it's fine to wash your hands in cold water. A small study in the journal of food protection found that washing hands in cold Luke warm and hot water removed bacteria equally well, despite the fact that hot water is commonly believed to be better at killing germs. Wow, right? So for all my, our friends who have little, uh, you know, germ phobe things, cold water is just fine. That's it. You, no reason to burn your hands, guys. Cold water will do it. The next one, you don't need much exercise to feel better. One of my favorite articles right here. A study in the Journal of Health Psychology found that light physical activity, like strolling, was associated with the greatest emotional benefits over high-intensity workouts. I think that I love the Journal of Health Psychology now because I can stroll and feel better than those who live their life in the gym, right? That's what I'm looking for, the easy way out, my favorite, so, but... That's okay. So I like to share apps, new ideas with everybody, as you guys know. And uh, there's a new app, uh, website and app coming uh, that's out. That's called Meal Connect. Okay, Meal Connect. This is fascinating. We have talked about this before, where the new trend in business is trying to figure out how to use our waste. I was just at a produce convention. Can't remember if I shared this with you or not. But one of the big things that people are talking about is what do you do with the byproducts when you're making something? So a perfect example is corn. Everybody knows you can go to the grocery store and buy a tray wrap of whole peel of corn that's already been peeled and cut and sitting there ready to go. Well, they run those through machines. And after a while in the machine, they end up with these giant bins filled with all the corn husks. Well, that's all protein and, and useful stuff, but it just gets thrown away because nobody knows what to do with it, right? Or watermelon rinds, when they're cutting the watermelon to sell it to you in a container pre-cut. Well, that's all protein, but what do you do with it? Right now, it just gets thrown away. So this, on a little different level though, Meal Connect. Americans toss out on average 72 billion pounds of safe, edible food each year. 
Around 52 billion of those pounds flow from manufacturers, restaurants, grocery stores into a landfill. Feeding America is a nationwide network of over 200 food banks. They have developed this new tech platform called Meal Connect to intercept some of that trash destined food. Isn't that amazing? So this organization works with six uh, 60,000 partner organizations that are actually in the communities, right, that are helping to feed people. This is how it works. The platform acts as, a, acts as a dashboard to manage the flow of excess food in the communities around their food banks. This allows business donors, whether it's a retail chain like Chipotle or a local mom and pop shop or a farmer's market, to create a free account where they can upload information about excess food they have to donate and select a date and time they'd like it to be picked up. The platform then matches it with people who are looking for food. And so if you're giving away potatoes and this organization needs potatoes, boom, the computer matches them up and then they go and pick them up for the person who's going to donate them. Isn't that amazing? It's automating the process to make it streamlined and smoother. I absolutely love this. This is fantastic. I love ingenuity. That is called the Meal Connect is what it's called. If you're in any kind of business where you have excess food and things like that on a farm or anything like that, you might want to give that a try. So very cool. So, but uh, on we go to, should we talk about pea milk? Should we talk about pea milk? You know what? One more story before we talk about pea milk. Here we go. Four things to make a boring presentation better. For everybody who's either in school or people who have jobs where they have to make presentations, here is four tips on how to make your boring presentation better. Very simple, quick, okay? Number one, turn data into images. That's make, that makes sense, right? You don't fill up a screen full of numbers. You turn it into graphs and things like that, right? Number two, make sure you're selling something. Interesting. The surest way to wreck an already boring presentation is to just be the messenger delivering data or giving in an update. Think about the purpose of what you're presenting and sell it. People engage more when they're being sold on something. Number three, add more content. So instead of just the facts and the numbers, bring in some outside stories that connect and make it entertaining. Number four, and last, share something they've never heard before. So go outside the realm and bring some interesting information to them that they'd want to know about, you know, that uh, keeps them engaged. So those are four basic, simple uh, steps to make your boring presentation better. So now, on to pea milk. So here's the story with pea milk, okay? All these stories, by the way, will be in the show links for you to check out. This, though, here is made by a company. The brand is called Ripple, all right? The idea behind this, the company's goal is to make plant-based dairy products that anyone, including non-vegans, will actually want to eat and drink, okay? They have a proprietary ingredient called Riptein. Made in a patent-pending process, the company says strips out the flavor of plant material and leaves almost purely protein, so its milk product does not taste like peas. This is made from peas, the, the vegetables that pe some people don't want to eat, right? That's what this does. So they're trying to make half and half and yogurt out of it. Right now they have a whole milk line. They've got flavored milks. They've got regular milks. They are growing like crazy. I mean, these guys, let's see, a little over a year. They started December 2015. 2016, they were already in stores, and they're up 300% in their sales already. While dairy milk sales are dropping, um, uh, this the non-dairy milk is predicted to grow by $2 billion dollars, which we've seen another brand a couple weeks ago I shared with you as well. So, I mean, this is a big deal. So it has all the health. So it says eight grams of protein, half the sugar of milk, 50% more calcium than milk, 32 milligrams of DHA omega-3s. And let's see, Ripple, it says on the bottle here, here we go. Ripple starts by hand selecting the highest quality yellow peas, which are high in protein, rich in vitamins and minerals, and low in sodium. We blend these yellow peas with other plant oils, uh, rich in function. So this is supposed to replace milk. So supposedly they can take the flavor of pea out of it. Well, guys, we're going to try it this morning. And I don't see the point in making fake milk, fake milk me personally because I enjoy regular milk and it doesn't bother my stomach, so I can say th something like that. 
Uh oh. This is like child sealed. How am I going to get in this thing here? Oh my goodness. And all right, we're in. So I bought this at Wegmans. Okay. I looked it up online. They had all the stores that it was available in. All right, here we go. So you can see what it looks like. Are you ready? Ooh, it's kind of creamy. And it's not straight white. It's like a yellowy white or something like that. All right, here we go. For the first time ever on the morning routine, we are drinking pea milk. Cheers. I got to tell you, it does not taste like peas. It does not taste like any vegetable. Very strange texture. Almost like... Like Ensure, like that creamy, thicker kind of thing, but not too thick. It's not so bad, man. All right. So that's pea milk, guys. You have now been formally introduced. And uh, try it if you like it. It's available at the stores. Let's go on and see what our Google Trends are today, guys. Google Trends, top 10 search things on Google yesterday. Number one, the NHL expansion draft. Number two, Oscar Fishinger. I don't know who Oscar Fishinger is. Number three, Mexico versus New Zealand, 2017. That's soccer. Number four, Game of Thrones. Number five, Solsticio de Verano. And then the whole article is in Spanish, so I don't know what it means. I think it has to do something with a solstice of some sort. Number six, Morph, as in M-O-R-P-H-E. Number seven, Casamigos. George Clooney could get up to $233 million from Casamigos tequila sale. Oh, he must have owned a tequila company. Number eight, Milan Christopher, who's a rapper. Number nine, just Mexico. Mexico. Mexico, the word, is trending on Google Trends. Number 10 is Travis Kalanick, which is the Uber CEO who has resigned. Let's jump on over and let's see what our trending news here is today, guys. What's going on out there? On the top of the list... Car bomb hits Afghan bank in rest of Helmand province. Uh, sad story there from the Washington Post. Uh, next on the list, number two, nine questions we have about the Senate health care bill. I have a lot more questions than nine, guys. All right? But, hey, thank you for answering the nine at least. Uh, number three, why Travis Kalenic didn't survive at Uber. Number four, FBI investigating officers stabbing at Flint Airport as terrorism. Number five, Game of Thrones releases chilling... Second trailer. That must be why it's trending on our Google Trends as well. Uh, number six, fitness blogger Rebecca Berger killed by an exploding whipped cream dispenser. Wow, that's crazy. A whipped cream dispenser? What? That's on MSN, guys, if you want to know more about that. Number seven, former Milwaukee officer acquitted in shooting of Silville Smith. Number eight, NHL Awards 2017. Number nine, Handel... First female GOP rep elected to Congress in Georgia. That was on yesterday. And number 10, Trump's new idea, a solar wall on Mexican border. Now we're talking. Let's make some power here, baby. So that is what's trending on our uh, trending news this morning. Let's jump on over, guys, and let's see what our passage of wisdom is this morning, okay? And today we are going to read Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 26, okay? Here we go. You ready? Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? It's a great question. And I understand totally what he's saying, right? To trust in God that why do we worry about food and clothing and, these, and things like that? Because God will provide. On the other hand, I totally get 
why this is so difficult. Totally get it. You know, I'd love to be a bird, footloose and fancy free, right? And I try not to worry about things like that. But you know what? Things like that got to come from somewhere, right? And so I understand this daily struggle between 100% turning over and trusting and yet at the same time worrying about how am I going to, right? I mean, what a tension there exists there. I, I totally get it. And this is a framework of something that we should strive for and that we can trust and that we don't worry. Yes, we work. And this is not saying that you sit around and just tweet on a branch and somebody will bring you feathers to clothe you and food. No. I mean, the raven, they're flying around all day doing stuff. They're not just sitting around taking naps and people bringing them food, right? So, so it doesn't mean we sit still, but it does mean that we shouldn't live a life of worry because what will it net us in the end? So great passage, a lot of tension there, totally get it, and uh, something to strive for for all of us. So, But let's pray, guys, and let's get this day started. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for today, Thursday, June 22nd, this day, 2017, that we get to experience and walk through with you. Father, thank you for the passage that you gave us this morning, a great reminder that we should rely on you and not worry as much. And uh, we spend so, uh, so much time worrying about how are we going to do that? How are we going to do this? How are we going to afford this? And Father, in the end of the day, we should trust in you. We should work and do our due diligence. But trust that you will provide and take care of us. And, uh, and live a life of service instead of worrying, which is usually selfishly motivated. Father, be with us today as we go out and, uh, and that we are productive in what we do and that uh, we are a light unto the people that are around us and we show them love and grace just like you have showed us. Protect our families, Father. Protect people who are traveling this week. Keep them safe when they're uh, crisscrossing the country or international travel that they go to and come back safely and uh, back to their families. Father, protect the group of uh, students that I know right now that are a bunch of cars heading for the coast for a great day at the beach, keep them safe and have uh, and uh, and protect them as they have a great day hanging out together, building great relationships. And uh, we love you and we thank you. Amen. That's a wrap, guys. So glad you guys were here this morning. I can't wait for you guys to be back here tomorrow on Friday. But until then, remember, drink your pea milk and be exactly who you were meant to be. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.